Is this another warehouse? Looks just like the one on the last floor. There's even a big old door in the same spot where the number nine door is in the other warehouse. True, but it's rusted over. I don't think it's opening anytime soon. <sighs> no lever to open it anyway, I can see. Yeah, shoot. We couldn't possibly open that with our bare hands. Duh. How much do you think that thing weighs? You'd have about as much luck trying to lift a pickup truck, even if it was unlocked. <laughs> I want to know what those are. Those white doors? Are they chromatic doors? Hmm. Yeah, seems like it. I mean, look at this. It's one of those things that says lock. Yeah, just like the ones next to the other chromatic doors. So you're saying all the chromatic doors for the next round are white? Yeah, they were different colors before, but... Guess things have changed for this round. Before we could discuss the doors any further, a familiar robotic voice crackled over the speakers. An Ambidex gate has been opened. 45 minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. What? One of the other teams opened the gate early. What in the hell they do that for? We haven't even started back yet. Ah, never mind why. We just need to get back up there pronto. I'm worried about Quark. We need to hook up with Alice and Kay. The sooner the better. Right. Got it. Let's go! And we kind of get to hope the Soparil is still in effect on Quark. Otherwise, that could get really, really awkward really, really fast. Return to the floor a warehouse to find only two people waiting for us. Kay, who'd gone through the red door, and Dio, who'd gone through the green door. Where's Quark? We took him to the infirmary. At the moment, Alice, Fi, and Luna are looking after him. Is he all right? I don't know if I would describe him as all right, but apparently his condition has not worsened, if that's what you mean. He is still resting. However, we... Good. I'm going to the infirmary. Uh, Ten Miyoji, please, wait! Ten Miyoji ignored Kay and took off at a run through the yellow door. Oh dear. He's gone. There was something I needed to tell him. Well, it's not like it matters. The girls will just tell him when he gets there. He ought to calm down once he's seen the kid. Clover and I looked at one another, eyebrows raised. Um... What are they going to tell him? Well, you see... What? You found virus medicine in the laboratory? Yes. Unfortunately, we found only a single vial. Then we can cure Quark's Radical Six. So it would seem. Well, I guess we should head over to the infirmary and see how he's doing. Yeah, the donations glass is still gonna look kinda empty. I mean, come on, it's my stream. How much do you think people are actually gonna tip me, huh? Come on, let's go. Right behind you. 
And I don't ask for tips or cheers or anything like that anyway. He should be fine now. <clears throat> it might take some time for him to recover fully, but the worst is over. Luna's voice was quiet as she stepped back from Quark. She held an injection gun with an empty vial. Delicately, she placed it back in the cabinet. Quark had been laid out on a crude cot and was still sound asleep. His breathing was even, and his expression was peaceful. He looked like any other child, sleeping soundly after a long day of doing whatever it is children do to amuse themselves. Any trace of the insanity he'd shown earlier was nowhere to be found. He's... Is he really going to be okay? Whee! Thank you very much! Yeah, I need a good sellout campaign. But seriously, I do appreciate the tips, do appreciate the cheers. Tips are a different thing. Which I don't have set up. Yes. We analyzed the vial and confirmed that it was definitely Excelivir. Now that I've administered it... The Excelivir should eradicate the virus completely given enough time, right? Yes, that should be the case. Thank goodness. Yeah, what a relief. Things are looking pretty sketchy there for a while, that's for sure. Yes, it is. I felt some of the tension disappear from my shoulders, and I let out a breath I hadn't realized I'd been holding. We weren't out of the woods yet, but at least Quark was safe. Ooh. Then Miyoji let out a long, shaky sigh and lowered himself onto one of the empty beds. He rubbed his hands warily across his face, and I thought I saw the glint of tears. Alice, you and Kay, I... I don't know what to say other than thanks. You saved his life. I don't know the words to tell you how much that means to me. Oh, please. It was nothing, really. We just happened to be the ones who went through the red door. Now see, the thing is, if I get a follower, it will play something. I'm not going to say what. Maybe you can guess. I don't know. Water is fizzing up on me here. Open bottle, pouring cup. Where is Kay? He's not in here. He's still in the warehouse. Dio and Kay stayed behind. They went there to wait for you guys while we came back here. We figured someone should explain what was going on so you wouldn't come back to an empty warehouse. Excuse me for a second, I've got to clean up the mess that my drink made. <laughs> there we go! <laughs> I may change that after a while, but for now, you know. Not both of them. There was only one door open. <laughs> <laughs> that worked. It did work indeed. I may have to turn down the volume on it, but for now. Well, we should get back and tell them how Quark's doing. Kay will want to know at least. Yeah, you're right. I nodded and headed back towards the other side of the room. I was nearly there when Tin Miyoji suddenly spoke. I can't, that is 100% volume on that thing. That's 100% volume on the Monokuma laugh. That's right. Huh? You know that memory card we found? This thing? Yeah. I think I know how we can take a look at what's on it. What, you don't remember? There was a memory card just like it that we used to solve the puzzles in here. Yeah, he's right. 
There's a slot next to the screen. It should work for this one, too. Hell yeah, there it is. Right, yeah. Yeah, let's give it a shot. Yeah, I want to see what's on it. Okay, just give me a minute here. I slid the card into the slot next to the screen. No sooner had I done so than an image of a waveform popped up on the screen. Is there an audio file on here? Why don't we turn up the volume a bit? Luna tapped a few things on the screen and a bar began to move across the screen. I can't say screen enough times, apparently. Before long, a voice drifted out of the speakers. This is Control. How's it going over there? Bet you missed the sound of my voice, huh? Well, I gotta be honest. It's getting pretty lonely over here, too. Feeling kind of like howling at the moon, lone wolf style. Speaking of which, I'm looking at it right now. The old girl is beautiful. Never seen a moon this full. At that color. Tonight's that eclipse, remember? What a way to end 2028, huh? The moon's this amazing red. If it wasn't so beautiful, it'd be kind of ominous. Wish you guys could see it too, but... Uh, sorry, forgot. You're supposed to be on Mars, aren't you? Hmm. So, uh, how are Phobos and Deimos looking right now? Sure hope I'll get to look up at them someday, too. Anyway, over. Hey, something wrong? Talk to me, guys. What? You gonna play hard to get because we haven't talked in so long? Enough jokes, all right? Knock it off. Where are you guys? Is there something wrong with the radio? You're saying everything's green? Well then, what the hell's going on here? Why aren't they responding? No, the video feed's online. Look, you can see all nine of them, three at each table. What? Someone hacked our feed? What do you mean, this isn't live? An old clip on repeat? Who would do that? What in the hell is happening here? This is Control. I repeat, this is Control. Please come in. I'm asking you to respond. This is... Oh, thank God. You really had me worried there. What happened? Six of us are... dead. What? Counting myself, there are only three left. How? Why are... Her... They were killed. What? I... I guess you could say I killed them. No, no, that's not quite right. Not just them. Not just these six. All of them. All six billion. Soon, I will have killed six billion people. Are you there? Respond! Damn it. This is control. I repeat, this is control. We have an emergency situation. We have an unconfirmed report of six deceased test subjects. Deploy rescue and escort teams to the test site immediately. Shit. What the hell happened in there? Is that it? Yes. And see, I know exactly what that's referring to. In multiple ways. You guys will find out eventually. What on earth if was you that? Don't know already. Any ideas? I get only frowns and shaken heads in response. Only one person showed a reaction other than stunned confusion. Tenyoji. Long after the audio ended, he stared at the screen deep in thought. Do you know something, Tenmyoji? Yeah. I think I know what that was. It's probably a transmission from the Mars mission test site. Mars? I'm sorry, what? You mean some kind of space travel? What kind of test site was it? Hmm. 
Did you know that the government is developing spaceships with particle annihilation engines? These ships would be able to get humans to Mars a lot faster than old chemical rockets. But they don't want to just send a manned Mars mission off half-cocked. That was the idea behind this test. They built a whole complex on this old Air Force base in Nevada. The idea was that it would be a simulation of a manned mission to Mars with a crew of nine men and women. They'd monitor the whole thing and use that data to plan the real mission. So what we just listened to is a transmission from that project? Yeah. Why is something like that here? Don't know why. We found it in the safe. No explanation. Dollars to donuts, it's got something to do with Zero's plan. You mean we were meant to hear what was on that card? Yeah. It's all very interesting, but how exactly do you know about all this? Oh, about the simulated Mars mission? Yes. I was involved with the project. Involved? Now, the intent was to create as accurate a simulation as possible. That meant we'd need to simulate the radio silence we'd experience during conjunction. What's a conjunction? It means two things in space are close to each other. In this case, we're talking about a superior conjunction, where Mars and Earth are on the exact opposite sides of the Sun. So unless we've got some sort of relay, there'll be a period of time where we won't be able to communicate with each other. What we heard on that card was when the simulated conjunction was scheduled to end. That's when they died. No, we don't know that. They could have died long before that conversation. All we know is that's when it was discovered. So six of the test subjects died, right? Yeah. Well, do you remember what she said? There was something about how she didn't just kill six people. She said six billion. What the heck did she mean by that? Just what the hell happened there? Isn't there a ship simulator in Nevada? Hmm, maybe. Tin Miyoji frowned and looked down at the floor. We were all silent as he paced slowly back and forth across the room. At last he stopped, raised his head, and spoke. The truth is that there's a chance a virus escaped from the test site. A virus? Wait, you don't mean... Yeah. Radical Six. What? How can that be? I'm just telling you what I know, okay? Nobody's sure how Radical Six got in there in the first place, but... One of the subjects might have been infected when they entered. Or, the virus itself might have been an intentional part of the simulation. The test site deaths became the index case for a pandemic. Anyway, prevailing wisdom says it got out somehow. And once it was out, it spread pretty quick. All across the planet. And it killed six billion people? No, not directly. Best numbers put only a third or so of those deaths as directly caused by Radical Six. The other four billion died from the collapse caused by the deaths of that first third. The whole world just... fell apart. Yeah, can you imagine what would happen to the world if two billion people suddenly died? Wow, uh, damn. I have a lot of questions. I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to start knowing where to start. Well, no, take that back. Explain that date. Unless I heard this wrong, the day the Radical Six got out was December 31st, 2028. Yeah. But the day I got grabbed by the guy in the gas mask was December 25th, 2028. Me too. Christmas Day. I was kidnapped on Christmas too. Clover and I were taken three days earlier, on the 22nd. Yeah. Then you see what I'm saying, right? That recording was made close to a week after we were all picked up. What the hell's going on here? That thing is from the future. You see... Ten minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. Of course, as we were about to get an explanation. All players, please enter your votes. If no vote is recorded before the deadline has passed, 
Any non-voting parties will automatically ally. We're out of time. We need to go back to the warehouse. Wait. You have an answer? Don't care. I need more than ten minutes to explain everything. Half-assing it is just gonna make you more confused. Now get moving. But... That's enough! Shut your damn hole or I'm picking Betray! Uh, hey, come on now! Fine. Do what you want, but I need to get back to the AB rooms. I'd like to stay with Quark. He seems to be doing all right. I'll stay here with him. If I can do the voting for our pair, I can trust her. Is that all right with you? Yeah, sure. Well, if you'd be willing to do that, I'd be much obliged. Thanks, Luna. Take good care of him. Well, we have been time traveling back to the beginning of this uh, scenario the whole time. Of course. I'll make sure everything goes fine. Tin Miyoji gave her one last nod, then turned and dashed out of the infirmary. No, Tin is a solo. Tin Miyoji's a solo against our pair. We're paired up with Clover. Well, that's that, I guess. We should probably be going too. Yes. We'll just have to wait to hear the rest of what he has to say later. I'd rather just get it all out in the open now, but there's not much we can do. Let's get going then. We returned to the warehouse to find only Kay. I explained what had happened with Quark, then glanced around the room. Hey, where's Dio? He has gone into his AB room. Already? Indeed. Then he opened the first AB gate, right? Of course. <sighs> this is bad. I won't be able to talk with him. This is going to limit my choices. You've only got one BP left, don't you? Yeah. Luna's the same. If Bai chooses ally, and Dio picks betray... Phi and Luna will be penalized. Uh, I don't have a choice. I'll have to pick betray. The risk with ally is just too high. Hey, Alice, don't you have one BB too? That's right. But Kay and I will be playing against Quark. And he'll just default to ally. I guess you don't need to worry about getting penalized then, huh? But what if Alice and Kay choose Betray? You needn't worry. That will not happen. Even though, as you have told me, Quark is recovering, he is still weak. Moreover, he is only a child. To betray an innocent child would be... Yeah, that would be unthinkable. Even if you ignore his age or condition, it's hardly fair to take advantage of someone who can't vote. So you'll vote to ally? Yes. Of course. Well then, shall we go? Yes. Kay and Alice nodded to one another and disappeared into the AB room second from the right. Without saying anything, Phi turned and walked to the, into the room just left of theirs. That left only myself, Clover, and Tin Miyoji. Do you remember what you said to me when you chose the blue door? Something about how you'd convince me to choose ally? Seems like now would be the time to let me know how you're going to convince me. Well, it's not that complicated. I promise you that Clover and I will vote ally. That's it, pretty much. Hmm. I see. And you figure I'll believe you because you've only got one BP. Once you've told me that you plan to ally, I won't be able to choose betray. Yeah, it's not even ten here. Not even ten at night. Since if you're telling the truth... You'll kill me. Mm, not a bad plan, but it assumes that I've taken killing you off the table. Seems like a risky bet for you. I disagree. Why is that? Clover's BP is six. If you ally and we betray, then she'd have enough points to escape, right? She could run off through the number nine door as soon as this round is over. I'd never... It's easy for you to say. But think about it from my perspective. 
Sure, you might not, but you also might. If I guess wrong, that's a pretty big loss for me. Well, what if Clover tries to seduce you to get what she wants? What? Huh? Well, that's just an example. What I'm trying to say is that once you two are in that room, Clover might try and make some sort of bargain with you. I'm asking what you're going to do if that happens. Are you sure you'll still choose Ally? Seduce me, huh? Hey! What are you staring at, you perv? Thank you for this, game developers. Hey. There's no way on earth I'd do anything like that! Ugh! As if! In your dreams, creep. Well, that's that then. Not gonna lie though, I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> Thank you for that, Sigma. So I can trust you. You're gonna choose Ally. Yeah. You can trust us. Promise. Of course. We promise. Alright. I guess I'll vote Ally too then. Three minutes remain until Abidex game polling closes. Not gonna lie, I do not appreciate what's about to happen here. Well, looks like we don't have much time left. I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you too. Tinmyoji gave us a curt nod, then turned and strode into the second AB room from the left. Right, well, let's get to it. We gotta get through this. Yeah. something what's up could you pick betray for me what I mean I could try and like tackle you but you're so big and strong you'd probably just throw me on the ground and that'd be it yeah well um God, no one writes like this. Seriously, do they? Please tell me no. So I thought I might as well just ask you really nicely. Oh, I mean, I'd be happy to, um, pay you back. God damn it, writers, why you do this? If you just pick Betray for me, then I'll listen to anything you say. <laughs> Yep. I'm not reading out these lines. Anything. So think carefully, okay? If you choose Ally, you're trusting him with your life. Uh-huh. Are you really, really sure you can trust that old fart? The only safe choice is to pick Betray. Then I'll have 9 BP. But you don't need to worry about that. Even if I do get 9 BP, I won't just go and open the number 9 door all by myself. Yeah, I heard that one before. I mean, Alice wouldn't have 9 points yet. And I can't leave her behind. Please? Will you pick Betray? Yeah, Everinthia's been here for a little bit. 20 seconds remain until Ambidex game polling closes. <sighs> the voting machine was in front of me. I didn't have much time left to think. Would I keep my promise to Tinmyoji and pick Ally? Or would I betray him for Clover and fall for the really bad writing that just happened? You just pick betray for me. That we have to relive to for some insane say. reason. In the end, there was only one possible answer. 
Okay. It is time to vote. Do we want to ally or do we want to betray? Yeah, pretty much everyone thinks we need to ally. Even if ally may get us killed. After all, we are at 1 BP, and if Tin Miyoji actually betrays us again, betrays us again, that is. Yeah, that writing is cringeworthy. Round two Oof. of the Ambidex game that was painful. has been completed. Results will be displayed in the warehouse. Thank you for your participation. Yeah, you only live once. Kind of. Ambidex gates now opening. Results from round two of the Ambidex game will now be displayed. And before you think the game won't kill us because we go to... The game will not let us get to zero BP. Oh, there are zero BP deaths. For us. Very much. Please direct your attention to the results screen. Two bits... But this is not one of them. And Phi played the safe bet with Theo and came out ahead. Points have been assigned or subtracted accordingly. Please check your bracelet to see your updated bracelet points. Looks like you managed to trust me. Well, it seems like I made the right choice. Only did what I said I would. You really helped me out. Thanks. I could say the same thing. No need for thanks. The corner of his mouth twitched into a grin. I felt myself smile a little in response. Clover, on the other hand, looked less than pleased. That was a bad choice, Sigma. Hey, you aren't opening the nine door right about now. Sounds like a good choice to me. And after I told you I'd listen to anything you said. Yeah, that was atrocious writing though. I don't count that. Oh well, whatever. She sighed heavily, shot me one last annoyed look, and stalked off. Across the room, Dio and Phi were already confronting one another over their own results. You tried to kill me and Luna. Can't say I'm surprised. Ah, oh, don't give me that. You know exactly what I was doing. I knew you weren't stupid enough to pick Ally. You'd defend yourself with Betray, just like I would. Wait, where's Luna? In the infirmary, looking after Quark. Is that where Alice went to? Alice? No, she went into one of the AB rooms with Kay. Yes, we did indeed enter together. When the doors opened, however, she left somewhat unsteadily, in the direction of the Cyan door. She left the warehouse? Indeed. Without even checking the results? Correct. There was little reason to check them. Yeah, it's not like Quark was gonna betray you. Indeed. And you two still choose Ally. Man, what a pair of bleeding hearts. If you say so, being mocked for my compassion is a small price to pay for retaining my humanity. Where did Alice run off to? While we were in the AB room, she mentioned being quite tired. Perhaps she went to one of the cabins to rest. Oh, well, I guess that would make sense. An ominous rumble filled the warehouse. The Abidex gates 
have closed. Round three of the Ambidex game will be the star round. Star keys are required to open the gates. There is no set limit on usage of the star keys. The Ambidex gates can be opened as many times as the players wish to open them. We can open the gates as many times as we want? Huh. That means the star keys can be used to play the AB game any number of times. If I understood that announcement correctly, that is. Hey, didn't Zero Junior say something about this? As soon as the gates close, your colors get all shuffled up automatically. The pair and solo assignments hop around a bit too. Yeah, he did. Can you guys all show me your bracelets? I want to see what our colors and groups are. <laughs> <Yeah. clears throat> Good night. Sleep well. Within moments, a series of risks were extended for me to examine. Huh. It looks like all the colors are weird. Clover's a cyan pair and Fai's a magenta pair, but Tenmyoji's a yellow pair. The three solos are red, green, and blue. K's red, Dio's green, and you're blue. Then how are we supposed to group up for the chromatic doors? I think they're going to be white this time. Ah, uh, yes. Dio told me about them. Very interesting. The Samurai Jack finale, huh? Enjoy. Yeah. They're white, all of them. I had a good look while I was waiting for Sigma to show up down in the warehouse. You should have seen them then too, Fi. Yeah, I did. You're talking about the doors in the Floor B warehouse, right? Yeah, so lay it on us. How are the groups going to shake out this time? Fi nodded and began to explain. Option A. Tenmyoji and me would form one group. Fi and Dio would form another group. Clover and K would form the third. Huh? Wait, you mean there's only one option? Yeah. There's no other way we can group up to make white. Alice, Luna, and Quark aren't here to show us their bracelets, so we don't know for sure what their colors are. But it's pretty clear they'll all be pairs, since none of the pairs here have a partner. So they'll be yellow, magenta, and cyan, right? Right. Alright, what now? We've got plenty of time until those white doors open. Yeah, about an hour, it looks like. I'm gonna go find Alice. Of course. I'll come with you then. Clover gave her a shrug and the two of them headed out through the cyan door. Do I really need to say it? The infirmary, right? You're gonna go check on Quark. Yeah. He gave me a nod and trotted out through the yellow door. That left only three of us, Dio, Kay, and myself. What are you guys gonna do? Huh. Yeah, I think I'm gonna head over to the lounge and have a drink. You wanna tag along, Kay? Are you making fun of me? I find it rather hard to drink with this mask on. Ah, oh, right, of course. My bad. Well, I'm out. Later. With a lazy wave of his hand, Dio slashed off towards the magenta door. It took me a moment to realize Kay was following him. Hey, what is this? You following me? No, you must be mistaken. I hope to investigate Floor B further. There are still several rooms I haven't visited. Okay, okay, you don't have to tell me your life story. See ya. Their conversation ended as soon as they reached the door and stepped through it. No, 
go, right? What should I do? Tonight's that eclipse, remember? What a way to end 2028, huh? Of course. I need to get the rest of that story out of Tin Miyoji. The words are scarcely out of my mouth before I set off at a dead run down the hallway and toward the infirmary. There's nobody here. The room was completely empty. I edged forward and peeked around the partition. There he was. Tin Miyoji. He was standing next to Quark, apparently oblivious to my presence, looking down at something in his hand. A picture? I must have made some small noise because he suddenly looked up, saw me, and hastily shoved the photo back into his pocket. <laughs> What was that? It was a photo of something, right? Was it yours? Forget it. It's got nothing to do with you. But all the stuff we had with us when we got grabbed was taken away. Why were you hiding it? Why should I tell all of you about one measly photo? Um, anyway, where's Luna? I asked her to leave. I wanted to be alone with Quark for a bit. So, why are you here? I wanted to hear the rest. The rest of what? What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about that simulated manned mission to Mars. We heard that recording about it. I don't have any idea what you're talking about. I'm getting old. Memory's not what it used to be. I seem to be forgetting a lot of stuff lately. Hey, nice try, pal, but you're not getting away with it this time. You remember something, all right. You remember so much you told me it'd take way more than ten minutes to tell it all. You really sure you want to know? Huh? Maybe I'll tell you, and then you'll regret it. Maybe you'll wish you'd kept your full mouth shut. Just think about all the hopes you've got for the future, and all the happy memories of your past. What if what I have to tell you makes everything you've ever believed ring hollow, and the whole world just crumbles around you? You sure you want that? Hey, come on. You don't need to threaten me. This isn't a threat. I'm being honest here. Are you really, truly prepared? Well, of course. I never got the chance to say I am. Before I could, Phi exploded into the room, her face a mixture of anxiety and fear. Good. There you are. Did something happen? Alice. Alice is. And Alice, of course, is dead again. Look, just come with me, all right? She's in the number two cabin. Without waiting for a response, Phi spun around and ran back out of the room. Tin Miyoji and I exchanged a quick, confused look, then leapt up and took off after her. Alice! The first thing I saw when I stepped through the door was the blossom of red on her chest. It felt as though I'd walked straight into a brick wall. I stopped short, my body refusing to move. No. Why did this happen? In every freaking timeline! I forced one shaking foot forward, then the next. My legs began to buckle, and I put a hand against the wall to steady myself as my heart thundered in my chest. Calm down. Calm down. This looks pretty bad, but you don't actually know anything yet. Yeah, that's right. Maybe it's not too late. Maybe we can still save her. And at last, I pressed my fingers to her neck, and those hopes were dashed. No pulse. Clearly, she wasn't breathing either. Her pupils dilated hideously, making her face seem somehow inhuman. No. No, it's not true. Why? Then I noticed it. All the blood must have distracted me, but now I saw that there was a scalpel buried in her chest. Judging by the position of its handle, she had been stabbed to the heart. 
I felt a sympathetic twinge of pain in my own chest. My stomach lurched. Bile and hopelessness rose up in my throat. I stood, hand balled tightly into white knuckled fists, and took a deep breath. All around the room were the rest of the Nona Games participants, except, of course, for Quark. I wanted to ask which one of them had killed her. Even if it had been one of them, though, there was no way they'd answer. All I could do was stare at each one of them in turn, ask myself, is this person a murderer? The looks I traded with one another suggested that I wasn't the only person wondering if they were standing next to a killer. An unsettling silence filled the room. Clover was the first to speak. Who... who did this? Say something! Answer me! Please, Clover, calm down. We don't even know if she was killed. Then what happened? An accident? You think a scalpel just dropped from the ceiling and stabbed her? Cool it, kid. You did it, didn't you? Are you nuts? Then who did it? Who killed her? Clover, even if we assume that she was murdered, that doesn't necessarily mean the killer was one of us, does it? Wait a minute. You went into the AB room with Alice during the last round, didn't you? Something happened in there, didn't it? No, nothing happened. Don't lie to me! There's no way Alice would just run off like that! She wouldn't leave me! Something happened! Yeah, those darn flying, dropping scalpels. If she was going to leave, she'd tell me! She... she... Hey, Clover. Don't you think just assuming Alice was murdered is jumping the gun a little bit? How can you look at her and say that? Scalpels don't just stab people all by themselves! Oh. I see. I see. I get it now. You're all in on it, aren't you? And the paranoia strikes heavy. It wasn't just one killer. It was six! No wonder you're so anxious to say this wasn't a murder. Clover, please, just settle down. Huh. Fine. Show me some proof, then. Prove to me in ten seconds that you didn't murder my friend. Or I'm going to kill every last one of you bastards! You're all going to die just like she did! Hey, hold on a minute. Nine, eight, seven, Clover, six, five, four, Clover, three, two, one! <laughs> Good, she's not on to me, says the flying scalpel. And of course, to be continued as we have hit another knowledge lock. So, that makes two knowledge locks we have run into. One, how can Phi and K be saved from, well, both of them about to die horribly? And two, is there proof that Alice was not murdered? So now that kind of cuts down what we can do here, because we kill this lock, and there may be a few choices pop out down here, but we've got to find the actual proof she was not murdered before we continue. And I did not mean to hit the button. So... We have a few places we can head to. We could... Be interrupted by the game. Let's see, for the earliest, we could go back and pick a different door entirely. We could go back to the first A-B game against Tenmyoji and pick to betray him and see what happens there. We could go back here and pick a different colored door. 
Or we could go back to the second AB game and pick to betray Tenmyoji there. Where do we want to go?